Good morning, Cross Point Church. Stand up for me if you would. Time change Sunday at the early service, right? The few, the faithful, man. How's that? How many of you had to set an alarm this morning? The rest of you, y'all been up since 4 o'clock anyway, and that's just the way you roll. So, anyway, we really are glad that you're here this morning. My name is Jesse, and uh, we would love to meet you before you head out today if you're brand new with us today. If we hadn't had the chance to do that yet, we'll talk to you about that. I, my, my mic keeps cutting in and out. I'm trying to find the, the magic spot right here. Can you hear me good? Yeah. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing together. Chris is going to come and teach us, and first we're going to bow our heads if you would, and ask God's blessing on what happens today. God, we love you, and we thank you for what you're doing in this place. We thank you for the fact that you are faithful to us and you are good to us and that there are people in this room, we know it, who need healing and they need restoration and they need the gospel and they need a lot of things. All those things you provide better than anybody else. Some of those things only you can provide. And so, God, that's what we ask you to do, that you would come in this room and do that which only you can do through the Spirit this morning. We want to return thanks for it. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. You guys sing.
is a brand new song that we, for us, a song called Holy Forever. And I want you to think about that, the fact that God is holy forever. And if you look into Revelation consistently, the angels stand around the throne and they sing, Holy, 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 for all time. God is holy and he is in this place. May we worship him in the same way.
Heavenly Father, we praise your name, that you are holy forever. That God, we just ask that you would fill this room with your presence in such a powerful way. That God, we know you are here because you are in our midst. And that God, you would speak through Pastor Chris and use your word for your glory and for your honor. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. How's everybody this morning? Okay, sleepy. All right. There you go. Well, the good news is, you lost an hour of sleep, that's the bad news. The good news is, is I'm just looking at it like it's 8, 12, so I'm going to preach about an hour and 40 minutes. That's it. That'd be good with everybody. So, yeah. Oh, gosh. I hope you are doing well this morning, excited about the time change and the warm weather that is not happening this morning, right? I walked outside, I was like, it's been 70. What in the world? I don't know. But uh, welcome to North Carolina, right? So there you go. I hope that you are doing well. I hope you are excited about your week coming up. I want to ask you a question this morning as we're going to talk about mindset and, and just where we are, your view of things, information that you know, information that you don't know, and what do you do with it all? So my question this morning is, what is going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen to you tomorrow? What is in your day tomorrow? What exact things are going to happen? You know for sure, no way around it. Do you know? Do you have any idea? You have an idea, but can you be exact? Do you know exactly what will happen tomorrow? What does the future hold? You know, and I've shared this before. I, I don't know if you've seen the commercials to call a number and talk to a psychic, right? And I don't know if you've seen those signs where they have a psychic. And I've always wanted to go to a psychic and just say, hey, I know you know who I am and why I'm here, so go ahead and lay it on me. <laughs> and just see what they say, right? Just say, I know you already know all that. But sometimes we think our day is going to go one way and something happens and it goes in a completely different direction. And we're concerned about that and we, we're not sure what to do with that because we are out of what? Control. And we like to be in control. We never know what the future holds, but we know that Jesus paid it all and he has us covered no matter what. So much speculation right now about the future. Finances food, fuel, feelings of fear, feelings of safety, feelings of we'll be okay. What should we do? Trust God. Trust Jesus. Amen. I love this familiar passage I want to share with you this morning before we ever get into the message. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me, Jesus says. There's more than enough room in my Father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, you hear that? When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. And you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We have no idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, that's important. Most important. You have to have that right. There's no other way. There's no number of rivers that all flow into one ocean as the world would tell you about as long as you go somewhere as long as you believe something no Jesus is the way Amen. and he is what brings us such peace the Holy Spirit can only give and you might say well what about the economy what about money what about the future before we get to the text, I would ask you, what are you giving God? What are you giving God? I'd ask you, 
that question again, sort of in terms of food. What are you giving God? The first plate? Hey, go ahead and be first in line. Or the leftovers? Are you giving him the first plate or the leftovers? If you have your Bibles this morning, we'll be in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21 in a message that was completely not at all what I had planned for this morning. So at some point during the week, it was just, it all got changed up and mixed up. So here we are. And we need to be reminded of our perspective on what we know and what we don't know and how we view it. Luke 21, beginning in verse 1. While Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them, for they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. Let me read verse 4 again. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. She had greater faith. She had greater faith. What about your faith this morning? Say, so, well, I have faith. How is your faith? What condition is your faith in this morning? Is it strong because you are walking closely with the master? Or like a tour group, are you sort of in the back and it's hard for you to hear what he's calling you to do? Maybe you need to walk a little faster. Catch up to where he would have you be this morning. You see, she had greater faith. She gave with her heart. Trusting Jesus for provision. Do you give from your heart to him all that you have? Your time, your tithes, your talents? Or does he get what we can fit in? Does he get the leftovers? Does he get the leftovers? You see, her thoughts were on the kingdom first. And we have to be kingdom minded. We're going to talk about that. Her thoughts were on the kingdom first. This is what I have. I know God's going to take care of me. I know he's going to cover it all. And some of the disciples we're there in the temple and looking around at its beauty and then Jesus spoke up. Some of the disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. The time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Teacher, they asked, when will this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place? He replied, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and saying, the time has come, but don't believe them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first. But the end won't follow immediately. Then he added, nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands. And there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons. And you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. For I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. Even those closest to you, your parents, 
brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you. They will even kill some of you. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But not a hair of your head will perish. By standing firm, you will win your souls. You see, Jesus spoke up when they began to talk about all the beautiful stonework in the temple. All the beauty inside that place of worship. And Jesus said the time is coming when all of these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone, not one, will be left on top of another. You see, we must all be kingdom-minded first. Are you? Are you kingdom-minded before anything else? Are you kingdom minded before any other things pop into your head? You see, many times we wake up in the mornings and we foot on the floor, we got to go. We already have it all laid out. Even on our way to our quiet time at the table or wherever your quiet time is, on our way, we're like, all righty, I'm, I'm ready, Lord. I'm going to spend some time with you because, man, I've got a busy day, right? Kingdom-minded first. It's like the widow's offering. Is that a hard thing for you to do, to be kingdom-minded first? Certainly there are plenty of things vying for your attention. How is your relationship with the Lord? How is your relationship with the Lord? Are you kingdom minded first? The people that you meet, the people you come in contact with, the people you work with, the parents you see that go to school with your children, grandchildren, your children or grandchildren's friends, do you invite them over? Because they have no church home so they can see you pray. They can see you talk about the good things God is doing in your life. See, it's all about the kingdom. Sometimes we worry about this earthly kingdom, but it's not a kingdom at all. We sometimes create earthly kingdoms for ourselves, but it does no heavenly good. See, we read about the resurrection. And we get to do that. We get to open this word and read the story of the resurrection. Christ's death on a cross coming up. We're going to get to celebrate that and it's going to be amazing. But you know why we get to celebrate it is because we know how it ends. What if you were looking through the lens of it happening in real time? What if you were living it daily during this time? You didn't know exactly how it ended. You see, the disciples and the others had to simply trust Jesus' words. They had to completely have faith in him because they didn't get to go, oh yeah, he does do what he said he's going to do. They're having complete faith that that's how it's going to turn out. Let me ask you this, and all of your worrying and all of the things and all the amazing, wonderful, good news that is shared on TV news stations. <laughs> The blessings of the news. And we all go, oh man. Oh my. Oh. Listen. We know how it ends. But in the midst of the mess, do you still trust the Messiah? That's the question. You see, we either believe it or not. We wring our hands about it or not. 
Jesus said, the time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not, not that there will be some corrosion, that there will be some settling, that there will be some cracks in the foundation of the temple. All these things are going to be completely demolished. You see, the building isn't above destruction or strong enough to withstand destruction. Now, this is a pretty safe building, right? Okay, that was a question, right? Thank you. Thank you for playing along this morning. We have a prize for you, a consolation prize on your way out the door. Thank you. Listen, 1930, this building was built in 1930. It's aged pretty well, don't you think? But guess what? One day, it's not going to be here. Because the building isn't above destruction. The building isn't able to withstand all the elements for all of time. But his church is. That's what he's saying. But the church is. Because is the church a building? Yes or no? Yeah. Thank you. We stood outside in the rain. We sang together and we worshiped and we praised as some do. Around the world. May not even have a place of shelter. His church is strong enough. His church is is able to withstand it all. A change can happen quickly. Change can happen quickly. Remember when we got a little notice in the mail that said, due to some health concerns, we will need to voluntarily close down for just a bit. You will need to stay at home just for a while. You'll need to take these precautions. Anybody remember that? Did that affect your life at all? How much warning did you have? Things can change quickly. Buildings were closed church happened anyway <coughs> we had a live feed right I always thought that was kind of an odd name for having your services or having anything on TV a live feed it's like tune in today for the dead feed like, like it's going to freeze up it's not going to work like I don't know that's kind of an odd name right but it's happening right now but we had that we had church anyway. You know why? Because the church wasn't about a building. It's about spending time together in worship and praise of the one true king. But things can change quickly. It can change without knowing. So I went to vote the other day. That's right. Primaries. Anybody thankful that's all over for the moment? Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Right. All the commercials, all the, all the stuff, all the signs. And so I go to vote. And I give them my ID. Because now we have to have voter ID, right? I give them my ID. I'm ready. And they said two words you don't want to hear when you go to vote and you hand them your ID. I'm sorry. Excuse me? I'm sorry. Your license is expired. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. <laughs> no. Turns out it was just recently expired. <laughs> so that I had to do some things, but yeah, got all that taken care of. But, but that happened kind of quickly for me. I, I didn't even know. And so as we're leaving... Confiding in my best friend, my soulmate, my darling bride. I said, you know, they should have sent me a notification about that. 
That's what they should have. They should have sent me a notification that my license was about to expire. And being filled with wisdom and love and compassion, she said, honey, you had a birthday. She said, there's your reminder. <laughs> so, but those, there's things that happen that we, that we don't see coming and it happens over time and then all of a sudden you're there and that's kind of where we are in living in this life. We see things changing. It's not the way it used to be. There's not a healthy respect and fear for our God and our King. So they asked, the disciples said, when will all this happen, teacher? What sign will you show us that these things are about to take place? In other words, when all of this is going to be completely demolished, when everything's going to get chaotic. And he says, don't let anyone mislead you. Verse 8, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and saying the time has come, but don't believe them. In other words, don't be misled. Don't be misled. Because there are those that would come that say, well, the Bible doesn't really say that. Here's what it says. And if someone says, well, that's not really what the Bible says, then maybe you should go to your Bible and read it for yourself. Right? He says, don't be misled when these things begin to happen, when someone comes and says, hey, the time has come. He says, don't believe them. Don't be misled. In other words, we need to pay attention to the word and not the world. Amen. Who has your attention right now? Is it the word or the world? You see, many times all we see is the world and then we go, oh, oh, oh yeah, I'm going to read this. I'm a little nervous about, about what's going on. So I'm going to listen. This should give you strength to say, hey, throw at me what you will. What can man do to me? <laughs> Nothing. I know Christ as my Savior and Lord. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. What can man do to me? Take my life? Okay, great. I'm going to be in the presence of the Lord. So let us live with confidence in knowing what the Word says and pay attention to the Word and not the world. Jesus says, and when you hear of wars and insurrections, don't panic. Don't panic. Yes, these things must happen first, but the end won't follow immediately. Then he added, nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands and there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons and you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. This will be your opportunity to tell them about me. When you hear all of these things, don't panic. Don't be afraid. Fear not. I would ask you this morning, if you are a worrier, and some of you are going, stop it. If you are a worrier, is that not fear? I am fearful that this might happen or this might happen or this might happen. How much control do you have over all of that? Mostly none. So trust him. Don't panic. Don't fear. Don't be afraid. 
as we just read. Now, you say, well, I don't know that we might be dragged into the synagogues and prisons. It says, but before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You'll be dragged into synagogues and prisons, and you will stand trial before the kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So in this perspective of us reading the whole story, we have the whole story right here at our fingertips. But for those living during this time not knowing what's next, could you think that possibly that persecution come our way? And if so, what will you do? How will you handle that? How would you handle that? You see, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians verse 11, verses 24 and 25, this, five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. He's saying, all these things I have endured. He was dragged. He was beaten. He was persecuted. <coughs> Excuse me. He was persecuted. Okay, some math here. Five different times the Jewish leaders gave me 39 lashes. Math, anyone? 195. 195 lashes divided over five times of being dragged and punished for following Christ. Are you at that place? Do you love Jesus? Yes. Do you have a relationship with him? Yes. Are you willing to endure whatever comes your way? Yes. We'll see. Interesting. We must all be kingdom minded first because what did he say? Because don't worry about what happens. Don't worry about the things that are coming your way or if you even get dragged in before the uh, governors, before the leaders, before the kings and the synagogues. Don't worry. Why? Because that will be your opportunity to tell them about me. In other words, what are you willing to endure in order to share Christ with someone? What are you willing to endure in order to share Christ with someone? <clears throat> are you willing to be inconvenienced? Are you willing to be beaten? Are you willing to be wrongfully imprisoned in order to tell someone? And this is not all that Paul endured when he encountered those who did not believe Christ was the Messiah. But if we're kingdom minded first, then I would ask you, can you handle it? We all say, yes, yes I can. Or, yes I will. As we sing, yes I will. But deep down in your heart, are you willing to endure it all because we know how it ends. We know what happens at the end of three days. We know the stone is rolled away. They didn't know. They had no idea. So with that knowledge, are we going to do anything with it? Just don't be afraid. Be kingdom minded first. But can you handle it? Well, I can, but I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to. Listen. 
Paul did. And then he was able to say, hey, look, here's what I went through for the kingdom. And this is not an exhaustive list. Here's what I went through for the kingdom. What are you willing to do? I would ask you that this morning. What are you willing to do for the kingdom? If you want to be kingdom minded first, it's going to cost us something. What are you willing to pay to see people come to Christ? What are you willing to pay? See, we know that Jesus said these words when he was praying. Mount of Olives. He accompanied the disciples there and then he walked away. We know the Bible says about a stone's throw and he knelt down and he said this, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You see, in order to further the kingdom, we must be kingdom-minded. In order to be kingdom-minded, we must have a relationship with Christ. And having a relationship with Christ means that that is who we are every moment of every day. Even when the official calls a foul, and you know it wasn't a foul! Come on! Right? You're kingdom-minded first. Even when you're upset, you are excited, others are watching. And there may be many people that have not been to church in a long time or ever that are waiting for you to say, hey, we have a very special celebration coming up at our church. On Sunday morning, on Easter Sunday morning, would you come? Would you come these couple weeks before then? See, we're all ministers of the gospel. And yes, I keep saying that. Yes, I keep reminding you because that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Because if we don't further the kingdom, if we're not kingdom-minded first, then one day when we leave this earth, are we leaving any folks behind to further the kingdom? Who are you speaking into? Who are you growing? Who are you mentoring? Father, I want your will to be done, not mine. Is that your prayer? Is that your prayer? Because you see, sometimes when we celebrate Christmas, for instance, we are preparing. We are preparing. Some of you have already begun to prepare for next Christmas because right after Christmas, when they had everything at 180% off and they paid you to get the stuff off the shelves, you're already preparing for that, right? Making plans, dinner plans, celebration plans, going with, uh, getting together with family. So I want to ask you this morning, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, Are you preparing for a holiday or a holy day? That's a heart question. Are you preparing for a holiday or a holy day? Listen, it's time we get serious about our faith. We got to get serious about our faith. We got to get serious about knowing that that person that you have worked alongside of for years does not believe, refuses to believe. You say, well, I've prayed for them. I invited them to church in 1979 and they didn't come. <laughs> then how serious are you about their soul? Time is short, church. Time is short. And you don't know how many days you have left on this earth, nor do I. So while we have breath, let us share the gospel. Let us be kingdom-minded.
See, there's a huge difference in the disciples here and where we are. Huge. They weren't able to read the ending. Now, we're able to read the ending about the resurrection. We're able to read about what might be coming our way. But in the instance of us living it out day by day, we're not sure exactly how all this is going to go. We know we win, but are you willing to endure? Are you willing to keep the faith? Are you willing to be kingdom minded? Are you willing to be strong, though you can't see? Until we hear that trumpet blast. Until we see our Savior return or until he calls us home, we must be about my Father's business. We must be about our Father's business. It must be his will and not ours. We must take God at his word and from his word. We must take God at his word and from his word. We trust you. We trust you. We may have to endure some things we never dreamed of. But we trust him. You see, he would be betrayed, arrested, and crucified. And we know that the tomb is empty. And we have hope because the tomb is empty. Amen? That's right. But I want to ask you how you would have been during that time. A few questions and then I'll close. Would you have been hopeless and helpless? Would you have been hopeless and help us. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go. Or would you have said, hey, here's what my Savior said. Just wait. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait because I know he's coming through in a mighty and powerful way. And I trust him. Or would you have been hopeless and helpless? I mean, they didn't know. They didn't know. Maybe... This would have been you. Would you have been distraught and disturbed? Well, I know what he said, but I'm just not sure. Did you see what they did to him? I, I don't know. Yes, I remember what he said, and I trust that he's going to do what he said he's going to do, but it's already been 18 hours. It's already been 18 hours. I, I, hmm. Where is he? The stone's still there. Would you have been distraught and disturbed? Or would you have been confident in the chaos? Would you have been confident in the chaos? And if you could say this morning, yes, I would have been confident in the chaos. Then let me ask you this. Are you confident in the chaos today? Are you? Are you smiling at people more, people more than ever? Are you more kind than you have ever been? Are you a better husband, wife, mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, uncle, grandparent, great-grandparent? Are you better at all of that than you've ever been because you know time is short and you know we need to love on people? We need to love on strangers. We need to love on our enemies. <laughs> enemies. Yes, we're to pray for them and love on them. How else will they know? Be confident in the chaos. Are you, would you have been confident in the chaos? Are you confident in the chaos? Well, here's the thing. We shall see. We shall see. There's an old saying that I, I don't know where it comes from, but we say it. You ain't seen nothing yet, right? All you teachers, yes, having been a principal, I know that is not grammatically correct. 
Okay. But will you be confident in the chaos? We shall see. Jesus said this. I have told you all this, John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome what? The world. Don't worry about the world, church. Go get it. Go into the world and make disciples, baptizing them. That's what we're called to do. This morning, as you have heard this message, I hope there's one person, I hope there's one family, I hope there's six or eight people that you cannot get off your heart and mind. And I hope that you will come and pray for them. And I hope that you will come and just ask God to move in a mighty and powerful way in your life that they might see Jesus in you, that they might come to a saving knowledge of Christ before it's too late. What would you do this morning? Would you be obedient? Would you come? Would you come and pray for them? Would you come and pray for your family? Will you bring a person with you, a friend, if you're here alone? Just grab a person beside you. We're all family here at Cross Point Church. Pray for our community. Pray for our state. Pray for our nation. Pray for this world. Be confident in the chaos because of Christ. Trust the word. Focus on the word. Don't focus on the world. Have hope in that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you that you loved us. Thank you that you came that we might have eternal life and forgiveness of our sins. God, I pray that this morning we would leave this place not just having been to church, but being the church and loving on people and reaching people before it's eternally too late. God, you move during this time of invitation as only you can. God, and if there's one here that doesn't have a relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ, Father, I pray they would find me and say, Pastor, I need that. That I might be able to show them how they can be forgiven and have a relationship with Jesus. God, you move your people as only you can. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Would you stand, please? Listen, don't wait. Make your way right now. You come. Pray for our Easter services. Come and pray that people would come from all over to the saving knowledge of Christ. Show
praise you and thank you for the opportunity we've had to worship you today. Amen. Well, amen. Thank you guys for being here today. If you're new with us today, if it's your very first time ever here, we would love the opportunity to meet you. Pastor Chris is hanging out right over there at that little room. If you'll swing by there, the, the newcomer's nook, hospitality hotspot, whatever we're calling it this week. We'd love to give you a free gift to say thanks for being our guest to get a little information from you before you head out. Also, big announcement, Easter is coming, and it's coming early this year, March the 31st. Y'all ready for that? Three services, though, okay? 845, 10 a.m., and 11.15. So, there's some little cards out there. We printed those out to make it easy for you to invite people to come with you, so do that. Get a card, invite somebody to come with you to Easter. It's going to be amazing record breaking all that stuff so so make sure that you do that the gospel will be shared people are going to come to know Jesus that day uh, one of the things some are blessed I'm having microphone trouble how about now can you hear me good uh, this is the spot all right summer blast is coming and that is June the 11th through the 13th that's our version of vacation Bible school we need lots of help because we're going to have lots of kids so if you want to volunteer to be a part of summer blast you can go online sign up let us know that you're willing to help we'll find an awesome spot for you to do that you can do that right now it's going to take some weeks to get all that together. Also, if you want to continue in worship through giving, you can do that at the boxes on the way out. One other thing. It's my last day with you. And uh, I wanted to come up and sort of... I really had myself psyched up that I wasn't going to get emotional, right? I even told Chris. I said, no, nah, it's good. You know, I'll, I'll be good. And it's just, I just want to sign off, you know? I'll do the announcements one more time. But here's the truth. I love you. I'll say it one more time. You have loved me well. And I look around this room. I've gotten to volunteer and serve with some really amazing people. My wife's over there. She would love to hang out afterwards. She'll, babe, you good? My family's here. But there's some of you that I've had the privilege of serving with for many years now. And that's been the greatest experience of, of my life. It's been one of the sweetest things that I've gotten to get to do. There's some folks right over here in this section. I can't call everybody by name. But you know that I love you. I would run through a wall for you. That doesn't change after today. And uh, I love so many of you, all of you. Thank you for being good to me and my family. Thanks for letting me have the honor of serving as a pastor here at this church. I love you guys. I think y'all good. That's it. Thanks. Let me pray for us and we'll be dismissed. God, thank you for what you're doing in this place again. God, truly, for the the opportunity to have served a, a people like this. God, we are, my family, we are grateful. Thank you for providing for us and caring for us and allowing us to be a part of this family. And I ask that as we leave this place today, we would just be reminded that we're still family. Because it's not just about this little segment of the body, it's about the whole body and it's about the church. And we are family because you've grafted us in as, as sons and daughters through the blood of Jesus, and we're grateful for that. God, we love you. I ask that your hand of blessing would rest on these people, that you would do amazing things in this community through these folks. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys.